Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is key number nine, which I'm calling lose it or no, 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 that's not what I mean. Oh my God, I'm having the hardest time getting this going. This is like my fourth tr take trying to start this. And I don't know, I'm just tripping over my words and everything has been a jumble. So maybe I should just, <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Maybe I need a different approach here. Okay, maybe I need to lighten things up. And you know, I'm a little bit weirded out, honestly, but like the fact that this is my living room behind me, because that's kind of like, energetically, metaphorically speaking, like letting you all into my house, like <laughs> my energetic house, you know? And I think that's, it's weirding me out a little bit, but it's very interesting how all of the experiences of making these videos is all teaching me something, damn. So maybe, maybe there's something I'm supposed to talk about first. So I think this is about, wow, I just looked at the clock. It's 444, 444. <laughs> maybe I was just starting a little too early. Um, anyway, this is about 48 hours, maybe 49 hours after I recorded, recorded the last video. And that one was, as you, if you've watched it, you remember it was like me having a purging day after all of this. Um, higher frequency energy coming in and uh, you know, so I did I kind of purged for a day and a half and then Last night the energy was so intense. I woke up in the middle of the night <laughs> And had to get out of bed could not sleep was on like an energy high all day And then I had to get up and go to work and here I am and now I'm kind of tired because it's 4 44 in the evening and I still got some stuff to do and um having trouble, having trouble getting this going. So I don't know what, what, what the point of all of this is, but let's, I'm just, just, just forging ahead. Okay. Um, use it or leave it. And I could have said, use it or lose it. Right. That's sort of the energy here, but use it or lose it. <laughs> <laughs> use it or lose it is has like you know negative connotations kind of that I don't really mean here this is more use it or leave it as in really figure out what is meant for you what, literally what is for you what is for you right now and making your entire ener energetic experience streamlined smooth and efficient it's like energetic efficiency is what this is about and I'm calling it use it or leave it because of the grounded experiences I've had in the last few days of like reorganizing my space, clearing up my space, literally cleaning out my closet. And I always feel like whenever, if you catch me cleaning my closet, it's like, you know, shit's going down because cleaning my closet is probably the biggest energetic work I can do like in a grounded way. It, it always comes up and over and over and over and over and over lately, over the past six months really, but now it's really hitting home. Um, I need to change, I'm really being guided to change how I manage my resources, but it, this could be about money, but it's not really about money. It's more like, I'm okay, I'm not really a hoarder, okay? My husband is a hoarder. He's always like collecting stuff and going like, I need to like buy that this piece of garbage from the thrift store and then he like saves it forever years and years and years and never uses it but he thinks it's going to be useful one day <laughs> like five years ago guys he bought an overhead projector like you remember the, the old old overhead projectors that you know they used when i was in school <laughs> um with the transparencies you know that like my stepson doesn't even know what they are um until we until my husband brought one home um, but of course, you know, it sat in our shed. We had a shed at the time and he, for years and he never used it. And eventually when we moved, we had to get rid of it. It went right back to the thrift store. So that's, n that's a separate issue. I think that's not really what I mean. I'm going to distinguish between hoarding and saving. I'm a saver. Okay. I don't, I don't hoard. I, I like to have like minimal possessions, like minimal, min I'm not really a minimalist, but I like to keep everything like I don't like clutter, right? And I don't like having stuff in my closet like that I'm not using. Um, but you know, what I've always found myself doing is I go, oh, you know, I don't want to <laughs> eat this tomato because if I eat the whole tomato now, well then in two days when I really want a tomato on my breakfast bagel, I won't have a tomato. I, I, I do calculations in my head like that all the time. Or I'm actually looking at in my liquor cabinet, I can see this bottle of like Bailey's 
made out of almond milk that I got when it was on clearance. It was like, like clear out. So they, I knew that they would never make it again. And I really like almond milk. I love chocolate almond milk. So I was really excited to find almond milk Baileys, right? <laughs> um, and then that was like two years ago and I still haven't even opened it. And now I'm like, does Baileys go bad? I mean, I know like liquor doesn't go bad, obviously, but does liqueur go bad? It's got like almond milk in it. It's creamy. I'm not, I don't know. I don't know how long it was in the store. Now I'm starting to think, is it going bad? Did I like waste my opportunity to use it? And so many things like that have been coming up where I was like letting vegetables go bad because I was like saving them until the day I wanted to eat them. And then I never ate them. And <laughs> books, I always was like saving for the right time to read. And then like their moment passed and it was just silly over and over and over clothes. Like, and I find myself wearing the same old clothes all the time because I feel like I need to wear out my clothes. Like I need to, or like, I don't want, even if I have nice new clothes, I'll be like, Oh, I can't wear that. I'm going to save that for when I go out to dinner. <laughs> of course, like last year, you know, this is October, 2021. So um, quarantine only ended here a few months ago. And so for like a whole year, we didn't go out to dinner. And so I lived in my pajamas for an entire year. didn't wear any of my nice clothes. And now I've lost weight and some of them don't fit. And it was like, <laughs> what was I saving? What was I saving all of these clothes for? You know? Um, so I have over the past six months really been cleaning out my closet literally and figuratively. And I've been getting rid of a lot of stuff that I don't that I don't use. And even though some of my old sweaters, maybe they were still in good enough condition to wear, I threw them out before they were full of holes. It was like amazing, right? And I have been even making a point of, even if it's just like the evening and I'm just sitting at home, which is basically every night for me. And sometimes I'll put on like nice clothes and I'll put on nice clothes just to like wear them around the house, right? Oh, just today, you know, I wanted to put makeup on for the camera. And I found like two things of mascara that had gone completely dry because over the last, you know, two years, I've hardly, year and a half, I've hardly worn any makeup at all. Stuff like that. Constantly, constant, constantly, constantly, constantly. I'm finding stuff that I was saving and then it went bad. It like missed its mark. <sighs> Along with this is when I cleaned out my closet, I found like a suitcase at the back of the closet where... I opened up the suitcase and I found like hot chocolate mixes that must have been in there for like four years and I'm finally drinking them because they hadn't gone bad. They're made out of powder, right? So now I've got like 30 packs of hot chocolate mix that my family's drinking. And then I found, but I also found like old shoe boxes that just had nothing in them and they were taking up space in my closet. And boxes full of old junk that I was like, I even moved with this junk, like what, what is going on? So the point of this whole rant is to communicate <laughs> the type of things you can be looking for in your life. Some of you in your physical environment, some of you is just in your head. Um, how can you clean up, clear out your energetic and or physical and or emotional space, mental space as well? <sighs> This is, this is important because I think the metaphor is you're vibrating at a higher and higher frequency and what happens when things are vibrating faster and faster, right? Just imagine, I think like a race car as opposed to your Honda Civic. <laughs> if you tried to drive your Honda Civic as fast as a Formula One race car, right? It would, maybe it's not designed to go that fast and things would get rattly, right? It's, I think that's kind of what it's like with our consciousness, with our energetic systems, with our light bodies. We want to be, if we want to have a smoother ride, if we want to vibrate faster without having our like nuts and bolts rattle around us, if we want to fly higher than we have ever flown before with as much ease and smoothness and joy as possible. We want to be like optimized. So maybe if I know some people don't really care about efficiency and that is worth thinking about. Maybe it's not really about efficiency. I just, I tend to run efficiency calculations a lot in my head, but I have actually been learning that sometimes it is important for me to just choose joy over efficiency. Sometimes like let things be inefficient and just choose the fun way. So there's, th that's definitely something to think about. So maybe it's just about optimizing, right? Optimize, 
optimize your environment, optimize your energetic system, your emotional system, your mental system. So, I mean, we've been getting messages about this. I think it was like key number three and key number... Trying a blank. Anyway, moving on. You guys know what it is if it's relevant for you to know. Um, that's another thing. Your memories... This is also, guys, this is also about your memories. Your memories are not as important as you think they are. As we move into a greater state of coherence with our higher consciousness, we're moving into like a more constant state of flow, of channeling. And we don't need to rely on our memories anymore. And that is why getting rid of your stuff <laughs> can be such good energetic work because all of your stuff is tied to your memories and memories are being removed. <laughs> memories are being removed. This is not the first time I've gotten this message as we heal there there are memories we simply don't need anymore and i know i i've been through this kind of lesson before when you're falling asleep let's sleep at night you know you can give permission to have memories um released like cleared out of your mental space and that was happening that was going on for me a lot during this past like six months of lots of like planetary retrogrades and it's funny now how clear, how clear my memory banks feel. It's almost like my hard drive has been formatted <laughs> and there's this sense of clarity. <sighs> Optimized mental space. Use it or leave it. It's a type of neural pruning. Yeah, um, you know, some of you might know like that's a, a term used in like psychology, right? It's a thing that goes on like physically with your brain. So maybe it's a like a maybe neurology would have been a better use word to use there. But you know, anybody who studies and deals with the brain, they talk about neural pruning, which is a process that basically starts around your when you turn 25, right around 25 to 27 your brain starts going through and going, oh, um, these you know, neural connections in the brain aren't being used anymore. And they actually start like dying off. It's literally like pruning a tree, but going on and pruning your brain. That's why, you know, as we get older, like into our thirties and forties and later, um, the stuff we have always done, we get better at, and we can become even more intelligent about, but you start to like forget things, right? Like what is your kindergarten teacher's name? Sometimes you have those moments where like, I can't remember my kindergarten teacher's name. Right? <laughs> and sometimes you just like, it's like weird, weird stuff that you're not remembering. It's because you're not accessing it. And from a 3D level, we tend to find that threatening, especially because we have this baggage about we equate our memories with our intelligence even. And a lot of the time it's embarrassing to be caught in front of people's like, if you say like, if you like think it's the wrong day of the week, <laughs> because maybe you don't keep a normal schedule and you forgot what day of the week it is and then everybody looks at you like you're crazy. Right. Um, or you forget something really obvious and that's embarrassing. Right. I think that's something that that's like a sense of shame. We're going to be challenged to drop out of because we just don't need to rely on our memories like we used to. We don't. And the, I, the, you know, that's actually why I had all those false starts with this recording because I was trying to, I had like a plan in my head of what I was going to say. And I started to like relapse into my old way of operating, which is less authentic and, but in my head, I was thinking, okay, I need to like be serious face and like say the right things and like get this all organized and stuff. But 
why, right? And then, and then I ended up, um, every time I turned the camera on, I would say a few things and it wasn't just the fact that I was like garbling the message or tripping over my tongue. It was that I was feeling this like sense of emptiness of going like, this isn't right. This isn't how I'm supposed to be delivering the message. So for some reason it was supposed to come out in this garbled off the cuff kind of way. That is a message that has been like hammering home for me so hard. And it's tough for me because I want to do everything, you know, I, like I want things to be planned and organized and smooth and, <laughs> and clear. And I think that, that, I think that that has to come from my mind, but that's not, that's not it. It's not it. That's not how it's going to work anymore. And I just keep coming back to this metaphor of cleaning out your closet, right? Um, I've also been noticing that a lot of the time, even say you don't have a lot of stuff. Say you're like, you know, shy. I'm already pretty minimal. I don't have a lot of stuff. There's nothing really I need to get rid of. Maybe you actually just moved and you already have cleared out a ton of stuff. So it's not about um, getting rid of stuff, but optimizing what you have. Like perfect example, um, me, my husband, and my stepson, we recently played uh, musical monitors, like with our monitors on our computers. And <laughs> it was funny because at first it was like, oh, like this isn't fair, right? Because you're getting a smaller monitor and that other person's getting like a lower resolution monitor and that person's getting an older monitor, like that's not fair. Um, but it ended up that at the, once we like, all shuffled the monitors around, everybody ended up with a monitor that was better for their situation, right? Sure, the one I got was smaller, but it was like, um, higher res and easier for me to see because I don't have very good eyes. So it was easier to see even though it was smaller. <laughs> and um, yeah, so stuff like that. So <sighs> shifting stuff around, little movements, little movements, moving things around just a little bit makes like a huge difference. And when I cleaned out my closet, I moved the mirror. I had a like a big full length mirror in the closet that it was at the very back of the closet and that was great because I could open my closet and like use the mirror and close the door um because my husband doesn't like sleeping in a room with mirrors so I keep the mirror in the closet <laughs> um but when we finally got rid of some stuff we wanted a better place to put the mirror so we put it on like the side of the closet and it was the weirdest thing when we just, like rotated the mirror and just leaned it up against the side of the closet I could still go in there and use it and easily but I like felt this whole like sh chunk this whole energetic shift. And I was like, maybe that was weird. Maybe it's weird to open a door and have like your image, like bounce right back at you and like bounce right back out. Um, interesting, interesting to think about the placement of mirrors and how that optimizes like the way the light bounces around your room. Right? So I think you guys are getting the picture, <laughs> use it or leave it. What, what do you want to use? daily and if you're not using it daily why are you hanging on to it um if there's stuff around that you're not using do you want to throw it out give it away or can you use it up you know i wanted to buy some cappuccino k-cups for my keurig off-brand thing um but then i found all of those hot chocolate mixes so i was like no okay we're not gonna buy any cappuccinos until we drink all these hot chocolates and that was a good way for us to just like use that up and there's something like so satisfying of getting to the bottom of something and clearing it out <laughs> so that then you can have fresh things come in so figure out the most efficient most optimal optimal organization of your physical space your inner space, your mental space, your energetic space, and how all of that clicks together and creates a better vehicle for your journey, creates a better vehicle for your journey that can withstand more turbulence and can fly higher than you were before, right? A little bit of optimization goes a long way, a long way. I think the only thing I wanted to tack on at the end here is that this also applies for money. Um, I'm the kind of person who would love to have like 50 grand just chilling in the bank as like a safety net, right? But I'm starting to see that I don't think that's going to be the way of the future. I think the way of the future is going to be having um, like ups and downs in like cryptocurrency, for example, right? They go up and down, up and down. And some people I'm seeing don't, uh, they, they want crypto to like 
flat line to like stay stable to be a stable economic thing or to just kind of like slowly advance up i don't think that's the way it's going to be i think that's going to be this constant up and down you know at least for our lifetimes right is up and down up and down and that actually creates a huge amount of power because you can you know if you can get the hang of it you can buy and like you know buy on the dip sell on the the peak and then and in that fashion up and down up and down literally creates more power it creates more like financial abundance for you it creates the flow creates the cycle and like generates energy <laughs> up and down up and down we don't need things to be static we don't need things to do this slow linear climb the way we used to do we can allow the in and out the up and down the back and forth so because of that we don't need to be hanging on to stuff and we don't need to have this um like a savings account full of money. Like if, if you desperately, if you're like me and you kind of like all your life just have really wanted to have a nice fat savings account, maybe that's not the way, right? Maybe there's a reason that that's never panned out because maybe your money is supposed to be like flowing, flowing, being useful and going flowing because in the higher frequency states, there's no stagnancy. There's no just like sitting there being still, right? It's flow and it's movement. And that's why everything needs to be fluid and flexible and optimized. Okay, I think, I think you guys got it. So <laughs> I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.